Since we started working on Elden Ring lore, no enemy has been more requested from our viewers than the Banished Knights. These knights are found throughout the lands between and show no singular allegiance. They fight for the lord that will have them, and consider nothing heretical. If it can add to their power, the Banished Knights will utilize it. There is not a lot of information on where these knights come from, or why they were banished to begin with, but we have theories, and we're ready to share them. The Banished Knights are one of the few enemies in Elden Ring whose altered armor set actually provides us with different lore. The helm tells us it is a thick, full set of armor covering the entire body. This helm was worn by knights who, whether by misfortune or misdeed, were forced to abandon their homes. Perhaps the deep red scarf was used to block the winds, for on the outskirts, the winds bite with a stinging fierceness. The altered version of the helm, which loses the scarf and shows a small dragon statue that was hiding underneath instead tells us, these fierce warriors were each and all accomplished. Perhaps that is why, despite their territorial losses, they were still named knights. From this armor, we learn that the banished knights likely traveled from the outskirts to reach the lands between, and that they gained their knightly status despite their losses on the battlefield. One theory we have on these knights is that they're not as disconnected as they may seem. While the banished knights are found working under commanders and lords, we believe they first and foremost belong to their own order. The Banished Knights all share the same armor set, with a dragon's horn on the right pauldron, and use the same swords, halberds, and shields. Where would they get this armor if they were not first part of a larger group that later splintered out after reaching the Lands Between? Whether or not they still share this camaraderie is unclear, but we are certain they once fought under one banner. The Banished Knights seem to take on the skills of whatever area they are currently defending. When we face them in Stormvale Castle, they utilize wind-based skills that can push us aside when they slam their shield down, or allow them to dash towards us. Multiple Banished Knights found in areas that have to do with dragons can use fire against us in battle. Lastly, the Banished Knights at Castle Sol can cause frostbite to our tarnished. It's likely that these knights have the versatility to learn whatever abilities thrive in the areas that they are stationed, but they seem to have a particular connection to Dragon Communion, as two of them can be found around the Cathedral of Dragon Communion in Kaled. It's unknown whether they adopted the dragon ornamentation on their armor after coming to the lands between, but we believe they may have dabbled in these arts before even Godwin and his soldiers. We can obtain the spirit ashes of two different Banished Knights while exploring the lands between, Banished Knight Oleg and Banished Knight Engval. These two were known as the Wings of the Storm, and they both attracted the notice of the Grace Given Lord. We learn from Sir Gideon Ofnir that the Grace Given Lord is actually Morgoth, so yet again we see Morgoth taking advantage of the greatest warriors he can find in the lands between. It was said that Oleg having slain a hundred traitors as the Lord's hand, earned the hero's honor of Erdtree burial. Banished Knight Engvall, on the other hand, rejected the invitation of the grace-given Lord, instead keeping watch over a masterless castle for many years, gaining renown as a hero of the fringes. So Engvall saw fit to remain in banishment despite Morgoth's gracious offer, perhaps believing that he deserved a life on the fringes. We find a large number of banished knights in Castle Sol serving under Commander Nial. The veteran's prosthesis tells us, Commander Nial, veteran of Castle Sol, offered his prosthesis in exchange for the lives of defeated knights held prisoner. He went on to lead these men as an army of no nation. We believe these men were the banished knights he is currently commanding. An important note here. When facing Commander Nial in battle, he summons two spectral banished knights to fight by his side. Their commander inspired such fierce loyalty that it reaches beyond the grave. The last group of banished knights we can find are located in crumbling Faro Missoula, and to be completely honest, we have no idea how they got there. It's possible they were part of Marika's forces when Godfrey led his men to do battle with Dragonlord Placidusax, but that's only speculation. We're also not sure that makes perfect sense as these banished knights are actually patrolling the Dragon Temple area and are able to use the Flaming Breath spell. 
Perhaps they didn't travel to Farrah Mazula with Godfrey. Perhaps they were already under the service of the dragons that originated from this sacred place. There's one other named banished knight that we haven't discussed yet. Edgar, warden of Castle Morn. He's an interesting case, as he's the only banished knight that we see without his helmet. We know Edgar settled down in the lands between, was offered the role of commander by Godric the Grafted, and had a daughter, Irina. Some think Edgar's armor is just a pallet swap, a standard knight's armor from software could use for this character due to the dragon horn on his pauldron being missing, but we believe that this slight change in his armor is meant to indicate his fealty to Godric, the lord who gave him such a high station in Castle Morn. To bolster this theory, Edgar fights with a plus eight banished knight's halberd, a clear indication as to his life before becoming warden of the castle. Unfortunately, Edgar's story ends in tragedy like so many others in the Lands Between. With Irina's death, Edgar is corrupted by the frenzied flame and must be put down by our tarnished, for which we are rewarded with his halberd and a shabiri grape. There's one last detail concerning the Banished Knights we thought was worth mentioning, their possible connection to the tarnished. While the imagery of knights on the fringes coming to the Lands Between already clearly parallels with our own journey to this land, it's worth noting that the armor we see in the Round Table hold, just before entering Fia's chambers, is the same as the Banished Knights. We can see the distinctive chest piece, a horn on the pauldron, and two variations of helmets, one with the dragon ornament and one without. We're unsure if this was simply a case of From Software using the most standard knight-looking armor, or if there's a deeper connection. What do you think? Whether by misfortune or misdeed, these knights were forced to abandon their homes and sent to the fringes, where they were forced to start anew with only despair for company. We believe the banished knights are a fascinating case of warriors in the lands between finding a place for themselves among the chaos of the Shattering. While they are in service to different lords, we believe their armor, weapons, and ability to adapt to the magics of the areas they defend speak to a larger order one that allows them the freedom to serve whomever they please, with the understanding that they are part of a brotherhood of knights. If you think we missed any important details, leave a comment letting us know. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our next video where we take on three smaller topics and give you the background of some enemies with less extensive lore behind them. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.